Overnight, a daunting concept. Traveling to Asian cities for a little more than 36 hours to try and find out what's possible in an always too short time frame. We take on this challenge for today's time-hungry travelers who try and squeeze in as many experiences as possible in a quick utopian travel itinerary. Backpack packed, we hop on a plane towards our first city, Taipei. Large, flat, bold, full of life and often forgotten. Taipei is a city that rarely comes up in any relevant top 10 travel list, usually seen as a not-so-Chinese island that sleeps in the shadow of its popular stepbrother Hong Kong. Taipei is almost always set aside as a boring food destination that has little else to offer. Armed with two cameras and two friends, we set off on our first red-eye flight and attempt to disprove this rumor. So we start off at probably the most emblematic modern structure here in Taipei that everyone can recognize, the Taipei 101 Tower. It shows us perfectly what the city is about, blending seamlessly tradition and modernity. But that's not why we're here. I'm here to show you what you can do in Taipei overnight, what the locals like to do, and what you as a traveler want to see. When arriving in Taipei, the best way to get into the city is a taxi. It's well organized and doesn't cost much. A ride to the city center will cost you about 1,200 New Taiwan dollars, which rounds about to 36 US. In fact, in a city as spread out as Taipei, taxis are probably your best bet to get around. Our first matter of business, food. Obviously, and we know that it is crucial that the first meal of any trip should be solid. So we try out some famous beef noodle soup. Some of the best local shops are Ling Dong Fan, Yong Kang, La Wang Ji. So after about 20 minutes waiting in line, we're finally here, about to eat it. It's probably one of the most popular beef noodle soups in Taipei. I'm really excited. Some other popular dishes you might want to be on the lookout for, aside from what you'll find at the night market, are the Chinese breakfast at Yong Hen Du Jiao, braised meat rice at Jin Feng, fried pork liver at number 5, lane 23, and probably everything at Chin Wei Guan. So what we have in front of us, tofu probably marinated in soy with some spring onions, chewy tasty briny, and then the spicy butter, I'm pretty sure is some sort of suet or fat. With lots of chili, really good. You can really just taste how intense that is. And pig ear, anything pig ear I'm a huge fan of. So you probably boil this a lot and it's probably gonna have some sweetness to it, some caramelization, nice and chewy. It's cold. Some tasty stuff, man. Beefy taste in the soup, you can really taste it's been cooking there for a while and you can taste that fat that they used outside that we saw a while ago. You want nice bouncy noodles. Oh, good though. I can really taste like all that awful because I got I got the stomach part right here. Absolutely beautiful, nice and clean. And you can really you can smell it, but it's not too strong. This up. If you're on a budget and want to try to lower the cost of your on-ground logistics, the Taipei metro system is actually quite efficient, clean, and has lots of intersecting lines. Also, as a plus point, it does not smell as bad as most European counterparts. Once we've had our fill, we set out towards a quieter district such as Fujian Street and the Zongshan district to try and get away from all these tall buildings. So if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the deep, tall city, you can come to districts such as these, the Songshan district. I'm actually on my way to check out the most famous desserts and pastries here in Taipei, the wonderful and moist pineapple cake. Let's go check it out. All right, let's see what this fuss is about. So I was too shy to tell her I just wanted one, but she sold me 10. I'm kind of a sucker for things like that. I actually thought it was going to be bigger. It's kind of like a chocolate bar we got here. All right, so it's some sort of dough. That's good. It's like nice texture on the outside, and then inside it actually feels like a pineapple. It's like a, it's like a biscuit with like pineapple jam. Very nice. After that slightly too sweet for me dessert, I walk around and find myself floating towards the fresh smell of seafood. Taipei thrives on a strong fishing industry, so you know it's going to be good times ahead. 
Some things that make me really happy, Taiwan has a massive influence of Japanese culture. Kind of reminiscent of like a smaller scale Tsukiji. This is a really weird restaurant called Aquatic Development Center. That's what Google Translate tells me. Basically lots of fish ponds where they kind of culture different types of seafood and you can jump from sushi bar to kinesushimi bar and just eat a lot of seafood. So what's cool about this is they put different types of uni together. So you've got the orange tongues, the yellow tongues, and the more brownish tongues. In Taiwan, we're now in France. Like these are these where we come from in France, we call them tourteaux or dormeurs. I'm not I'm not sure what you call them here. Those really look like spider crabs, and you got your massive snow Alaskan crabs over there, and then obviously lobster. And my uni. So I have everything that I need. Everything's kind of just like plated. It's not only the ingredient. Like the scallops comes in roe, some wakame, some, some wasabi. The uni's put on like some sort of jicama that's really just grated nicely. Can't wait it again. Look at that color of that uni tongue right there. So excited. So good. If Taiwanese Japanese fare isn't on your list, you can always check out the newly opened Roots Creative doing Americana style food with local ingredients. Café de Riz, Beeline, Dawan, or the hard to get to reservation Raw by famed Singaporean chef Andre Chang. We tried, but obviously we weren't able to get a table. So this is like, I think it was an old school kind of factory industry district and then they kind of just refashioned it into like a little hip town. Obviously you have the old school 90s hip hop playing in the background, kind of sets the tone for everything. And you have a lot of pretty people, people dressed up in like hipster clothing. Nice and fun. So the whole space is just really eclectic. There's like a lot of different performances happening, museums, exhibitions, and things. So it's a really just cool spot to kind of hang out. It's very different from what you expect in Taipei. Taipei seems to have an appreciation for open spaces, which is a great respite and usually filled to the brim Asian capitals. These are usually a mixed-use development for art, food, and culture. We arrived at Huashan 1914 and it was filled with people just strolling and checking out exhibitions on a cool Saturday afternoon. If you're in Taipei only for a short time, I always tell people stay in the heart of it all. Right now we're in the Ximending area and it's probably where the most of the hustle and the bustle kind of happens at night and during the day. So this is the perfect place to kind of have as a base in Taipei to see the rest of the city. Ximending gets a little hectic at night. Street vendors, shops, and certain areas that resemble a red light district start to open up. But it's a great central location and there's always something happening. For great accommodation, check out the Humble House or Home Hotel for something traditional. Or if you're looking for a hipper hostel, check out Chocolate Box Backpackers. So it's about 6 p.m. on a Saturday night and I can really feel the city kind of wake up, all that energy is kind of in the air. And I know it's about time for a drink, so I'm going to meet up with Yi. Yi is the owner of a cocktail bar called Ounce and he's kind of going to give us some tips on what we can do tonight. Check it out. What made you feel that Taipei was kind of ready for a speakeasy concept? It's classic American cocktails, Class, mostly, that you did? Yeah, okay. classic cocktails. So like strong, strong, yeah, strong. Stronger, bolder flavors. Yeah, correct. Less, I would say less nuanced than like a normal Japanese style. Yeah. Let's say we're here for a day, basically. What would be a day for him? Obviously, if you're in Taiwan, there's certain things you have to experience. There's food culture, yeah. which is huge here. A lot of snacks, a lot of night market. You know, there's been a huge change from what we've seen since these past three, four years. There are it's like a lot of small boutique places opening up. MOD, MOD, which okay. is one of the, actually the first uh, whiskey bars in okay. Taiwan. So it's a good mix of between divey, local, and yeah. then they, they know their whiskey. So you should never leave Taipei without going to the night markets. They are essential and have all the best dishes in one place. I know a lot of tourists go there and it gets a little confusing, but it's always worth it. So check BuzzFeed for which are the top Taiwanese eats at the markets and don't leave until you try them all. So I lined up to the, to the cute old lady there and I, I went like this. Thinking this meant three, right? So I paid 400, which is like barely $10. And I end up with like 16 toasted buns, 
which, which we obviously can't finish, but oh well. We're gonna eat them anyways. All right, so it's like a toasted like rice bread bun. I, I don't even know what the inside. I think it's pork and like chives and something. Fuck us, blood. Onwards. I don't think we have enough food. Some of the best markets are Ningxia, Xilin, and Raohe. Just choose one and just stick to it. So you don't need to go to a certain soup dumpling tr franchise that's pretty well known internationally to get your soup dumplings here in Taipei. There's a lot of different dumpling shops here, a little bit of black vinegar, and then it's just a little pouch of heaven kind of filled with all the good stuff that you're really wanting to have out of it. All that flavor just explodes in your mouth. So we obviously did not settle for just one cocktail, but for the sake of brevity and sobriety, we will just show you one. I also can't quite remember exactly how many we had. But if you're on the hunt for a good time, you might also want to try the famed dive bar fucking place, the Japanese style cocktail bar Washu, MOD, or even the Diary Bistro. After going around for a while, it seems that Taipei is the kind of city that you really always need to keep your eyes open. There are a bunch of little lanes, a bunch of little side streets, always full of different bars and clubs and things like that. We went to a couple bars and now we're hitting one of the only underground clubs, I think, in Taipei. It's called Corner. It's below this place called The Wall. We're not really sure where we are. It's a little, uh, there's a highway right there. There's lots of cars. We don't see a lot of people outside, so let's check it out and see what it gives. If hip and underground isn't really your thing, check out the hyper-packed, filled with pretty drunk people mega clubs like Chess, The Wall and Legacy, Halo, Luxie, and Triangle. After a few drinks, these places will all start sounding and looking alike. So don't attempt to club hop. Hey guys, so we're here outside a corner. So I met some people from Korea. Where are you guys from in Korea? Seoul. So I live in Budang. What brings you to Taipei? Vacation. Vacation. <laughs> All right. Before arriving here, what were your preconceptions of the city? It was advertised as a good place for friends to go. Honestly, in the past couple hours, we've met so many foreigners, like True. not from Asia, and they're very nice, Correct. and they love Taiwan, yeah. Uh, so I'm here with Jufon, and um, really outside a corner. corner, really great that I met you right now. If you had um, just 24 hours to bring a friend around, where would you bring them in Taipei? If I have foreign friends, I would suggest them to eat Taiwanese local dishes, such as oyster noodles. How about um, best place to party in Taipei? Uh, well, there are not too many. <laughs> Basically, the, the two spots we go is corner or revolver. Wake up and smell the coffee. Before hitting Sunday brunch, grab a quick one at Campus Cafe, Costumis, or even the Ecole Coffee Shop. There's actually quite a lot you can do on a Sunday morning here in Taipei. You can actually go to a park, do some Tai Chi, but we were a bit too tired to do that this morning. So we decided to come here, take a stroll down on Dihua Street. It's like an old center of Taipei. There's lots of good eats around, nice specialty tea stores. So it's a nice leisurely day. We might check out some temples and things like that. We'll see where the day takes us. If you want to try to get out of the main hustle of the city, we're going here to Maji Maji, which is basically in the Expo Park. Really cool green place, lots of different types of foods and stalls to go to. And yeah, I'm just really excited. We're starving, we hadn't had breakfast yet. While we find ourselves eating yet again, two markets were happening. Fresh produce was being sold. It's a great place to just get a proper Sunday vibe for the city. This is exactly my kind of meal. We have a little bit of everything. I've got some, I'm pretty sure these are beef intestines that have been stewed down over some rice, then some fatty beef cuts with some onions, again over rice, cold noodles with an exo sauce, takoyaki. We got some pork rice basically cooked in a bamboo shoot some cold noodles with sesame dressing, and two like lovely little miso soups. This is exactly what the doctor ordered, and I think we're just all really excited to eat this right now. There are quite a few temples in the city, but Longshan is probably the only one you should check out if you don't have much time. 
Other interesting cultural stops would include Chiang Kai-shek Memorial and the Treasure Hill Artist Village. That was the Long Shan Temple. Probably, they said one of the oldest, probably one of the first Buddhist temple here locally. It was made for the War of God, and there's three different factions in there. Really interesting place. It's always great to see how the locals kind of pray and how faithful they are and the different types of religions that are present. That's what I love about this city. You can literally just walk in and it continuously surprises you with like these different places. We saw a bunch of fruits from the outside, and if you look at the counter, it's basically just heaps of fruits. We've got grapefruits, oranges, mangoes, limes, and things like that. And they're using old school machines that we have in front of us, a papaya milk, which is what people in the markets actually line up for. Mango shake and grapefruit juice. So refreshing, I could actually spend all day here. Verdict, we would definitely come back. Not only is a city filled with unique and traditional eats, but the Taiwanese people are kind, helpful, and always up for a good time. Not as fast paced as other cities, but a must stop for any serious Asian traveler. Next stop, we pack our bags and head on to Saigon. Watch me and a friend almost get run over by scooters and eat some of the best street food of our lives. We would like to thank Access Travel and Tours for making this trip possible and organizing all our logistics for us. Check out their site for more information. So Overnight Taipei was brought to you in part by our good friends at Cebu Pacific and here's a quick tip from them. Did you know that mostly 70% of passengers still do not check in online? So be part of the smart of the 30% and check in online so you don't have to wait in line and queue up. It's not a hassle and it's so easy to do.